So good evening. Uh, my name is Rivka Rabbit. Um, I live in Israel. I'm 45 years old. I belong to the Haredi community in Israel. And I used uh, to be the chief of staff to the Israeli president for, set, for the last seven years. Um, and that's a high uh, uh, rank job in Israel. So um, I got a lot of uh, experiences uh, through that. Um, maybe I'll start with a story. The former president, uh, yeah, raised my voice. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> I'm used to, oh, I, I forgot to tell you, I have 12 children. So as a mother to 12 children, I, I used to raise my, my voice. <laughs> so I'll try to do that um, here too. Um, so once I was with the president uh, at a state visit in Ukraine. Ukraine is now, and uh, yeah. So we were there at a state visit and we had a long day bilateral meetings and national affairs, all the ceremonies, uh, red carpets and black cars and all that. And the day was finished and we were preparing for the next day also for a, a few meetings and we were speaking about the meetings, what uh, talking points we should uh, 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 bring up and we were supposed to meet the prime minister and things like that. And then we went to sleep. It was very late. It was almost midnight. Uh, went to sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, something, somebody was knocking on my door. And I got really scared. I said, who could knock on my door? So I, had, uh, so I ran to, I put something on myself and I ran to the door. And I was relieved because it was just one of my staff. Uh, Chaim was his name. And I said, Chaim, what happened? Two o'clock in the morning. And he said, I'm so sorry to be the one to tell you. But former president of Israel, Shimon Peres, you heard about him? He was pretty known. He passed away. Well, that was like a shock for me because as chief of staff, it's my duty to pick up all that, uh, to pull up all that funeral. And I was like, from my sleep, awake, uh, awake in a moment and Thinking to starting to think who will be coming, probably presidents and kings from around the world. And I'm here in Ukraine. It's uh, Wednesday uh, night, and this funeral will be happening on Friday. So first of all, we took a plane, uh, traveled back home. I even didn't tell my children I'm back in Israel because they just waited for me for Friday. And I knew I'm um, going to work very hard these two days. So I just called my husband and I told him if he could come and take my uh, suitcase from uh, my car. And he uh, took it home. I, I told him just put it, they, the children shouldn't see it. They should understand I'm here. <laughs> and I ran, I ran to my office and from the office to Mount Herzl. Mount Herzl is where uh, we bury our presidents in Israel. And it was a hectic day, tons of uh, um, Technical uh, uh, details, some some uh, important ones like security, and some less important like which king will sit next to which prime minister, and which of them we should separate at any price. <laughs> so it was really a thick. And then we started to hear that maybe President Obama will be attending the. Uh, you know, you should understand. Usually, when we um, get a president. To visit Israel, we prepare like for a month of things so, like uh, we prepare a lot, especially if it's a president of, of the states. They they are crazy. They bring all the security, they bring all the cars with them. Really crazy. And this is going to happen in 24 hours, and I'm responsible for this. Uh, so I really didn't go to sleep, nothing. And uh, three hours before they were all supposed to land at Mount Herzl. I looked at myself and I'm still with my black uh, shirt and uh, skirt from, uh, from Ukraine. So I just ran home on my way back home. I called my husband and I said, are all the children asleep? Because, for, well, they know I'm still in Ukraine. Yes, they are asleep, so I ran back home. I put my clothing in the shirt, a uh, cycle of 15 minutes at the, in the machine, <laughs> forgetting that I have to dry them, but I didn't have time, so I put them down and ran <laughs> back to um, and hurt so 
starting to get all those delegations, uh, the King of Spain, uh, the president of uh, France, Francois Hollande, uh, the governor of Australia, the prime minister of Canada, uh, Justin Trudeau, all of them were coming in. And the last one came in was uh, President Obama. And cut a long story short, and it's a Friday, a Friday, a short Friday, and uh, my children are waiting for me. But even after the funeral was uh, finished, we had to, according to protocol, uh, to meet those uh, presidents. So we got them in and out. And as I see the Prince of uh, Britain, the Prince Charles sitting, and his meeting was long and long, and he didn't finish. And I look at my uh, clock, and I see that uh, President uh, of uh, France is on his way. There's only one red carpet. They can't meet one to one of each other. So I called the uh, security guy and I said, listen, uh, there's a crisis here. Are we not uh, standing on time? So he called the uh, driver of uh, President uh, Holland and he told him, uh, we are late, we need five more minutes. And so the driver said, no problem, I'll take him on the scenic route. Uh -huh. And it just took two words of me to drive uh, the president of France in circles uh, around uh, Yerushalayim. Um, and the day was over. I got home just the, uh, by the last minute uh, for lighting candles, Shabbos candles. And the way I was calling my children, telling them Ima came back home. And they said, Ima, you can't believe what we saw. Your yeah, suitcase is here from yesterday. <laughs> so he didn't put it so good. Uh... <laughs> and then I was going down the steps to, towards my uh, house, and my neighbor was seeing me, and she said, Rivka, how do you do that? How? Who cooked your child? Who put your hot plate? And I was like thinking, how is a question, but I think the question is why? Why do I do that? Why did Hashem put me in such a bizarre um, situation? Uh, I was asking myself the same question a year before. Uh, it was an Arab Pesach, regular Arab Pesach. I went out of the house, it was a quiet day. I didn't have too much meetings that day. And I said, another week is Pesach. I'll take my children today to buy them clothes for Pesach. Place. I'll clean the fridge, I'll um, do my uh, server, everything over today. It's a very good day, not a longer, not, not too long, not too uh, hectic. And as I was uh, getting close to Rishalai, it was seven o'clock in the morning, 7 uh, 30 maybe, my phone rang in the car. I looked at the phone and it was the general director of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Nissim, his name. So I said, Good morning, Nissim, so early. Usually he was not uh, awake so early. And he said, yes, good morning, I need a favor. What's the favor? That sounded already not so good, but what's the favor you need? So he said, the president uh, of Singapore uh, uh, passed over. And I need the president of Israel to take part in his funeral. And I understood uh, as I was shocked hearing this, that he's right. I asked him, tell me, Nisim, who are the other uh, leaders that will take uh, part in the funeral? And he gave me the names. And I, as he go, goes on, I understood there's no choice. We have to take, uh, Israel has very special relationships with uh, Singapore because of her neighbors, of Malaysia and things like that. Mossad, can't, we can't speak about it, but Israel needs very good connections with Singapore and I understood it that we have no choice and we have to go and take part in that funeral. So I said, Nisim, tell me when is the funeral? And he said, it's on Sunday. So if you don't want to travel on Shabbat, as you go. Uh, so you have to go today. And that's what happened. I woke I went up in the morning in Bekhtar um, planning a very easy day, buying uh, clothing with my children for, for Pesach. And then I found myself in the afternoon in Bangkok and later the night in Singapore. I didn't even have time to uh, go home and uh, take my suit and take uh, my things. So I called my husband and he brought me my bag to the office. I didn't even know what he put in. The big, uh, yeah, when I came there, I saw he put in some, uh, some uh, 
snacks and things like that. And that was a good idea because I didn't have anything to eat there. Um, so that was a good, a good idea that he did that. Um, and I came back the day of Brikat Hametz. Every day they were calling me, my children and saying, we're cleaning this room and we are cleaning that room. And don't ask, Abba bought big garbage uh, bags and we are throwing a lot of things and I got scared because I have a lot of important things at home that I don't let anyone to throw, like um, broken chairs that I'm, yeah, I'll repair them in a few days and broken um, tiles and floors and things like that. I, I have a, a room, a machsan of shmatis, and there I collect all my things that I one day I will fix. And I was really scared that something is happening, that uh, something bad is happening to my uh, shmatis machsan. And uh, as I came back the day of Bikat Hametz, they were also happy. And they were showing me their rooms, how it's clean and neat, and everything was really clean. I ran to my a special uh, uh, corner in the garden and I opened the door and it was empty. He threw out all my old chairs, all my uh, collections of things that I have to fix. And I was almost uh, crying, but he was so happy. My husband and he said, you see, it's so clean. What do you say? Isn't it gorgeous? I said, yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, and my neighbors also again said, Rivka, how do you do that? We know you have 20 people for us. They just said that, uh, well, your children and family and friends. How, how could you do that? And I was uh, asking myself, how is a question? And uh, that has answers too, but why? Why do I find myself in, a, in such uh, bizarre situations? Um, not not a, a long time ago, uh, we visited in, in, in Moscow, in Russia. And we met uh, President Putin, that he's also famous today. Um, and we, we had a long day, meetings, bilateral meetings with his uh, prime minister, with him, with his uh, foreign affairs minister, Lebrov, that's very known also today. It was a long day. And then he invited us uh, for a state dinner. We were sitting with him for a state dinner. Uh, I was sitting here and he was sitting there, like it was a small state dinner, all kosher nine portions with no exaggeration, like really very fan, a very fancy uh, dinner. And um, I remember before going to, to visit him, I was asking my rabbi, uh, uh, Shayla, uh, if I should bench Shechalak Mikvodole Basavadan. Usually he was telling me when I uh, meet uh, presidents and kings and heads of states, you could bench, but not the full uh, bracha with no Shema uh, Machus. But he said, uh, when you go to meet Putin, you could bench the full bracha. Why? Because he's a king that has the will to kill and he kills. So I was benching the bracha and we were sitting there and he gave us a present, uh, some, something he probably stole from Jews, don't tell him, uh, a hand of Sefer Torah from uh, pure uh, silver. And then he was telling us, I want to tell you a story about my child. And he was telling us about his family. He used to live in uh, the skirts of uh, St. Petersburg. And his parents, he was a, 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 an only um, son. And his parents worked very hard. They went out of the house early in the morning, came back home very early, uh, late at the evening when it was already dark. So he was lonely. The, the, most of the day he was lonely. And then he found a family that lived in the same block. And he loved that family. They had a few children and their children were polite. And he loved that family and they helped him with homework and he was staying, gave, them, gave him food. He was staying there a lot, but they had a weird thing. Uh, when Friday afternoon came, the mother would light candles and all the family will sit for a nice uh, festive uh, dinner. And I'm sitting here and he's sitting like, one meter between us. I can't believe I'm hearing that story. And he said, then when I became uh, the president and I became and I had influence, I understood they were Jews. And I uh, tried to treat Jews as best as I could. When, when we finished that dinner, I went out and I said, this is crazy that I said and heard that story. And maybe he just made that for me because he saw I'm Haredi and was speaking about my family and my children and things like that. 
I thought maybe he just made a story up. He thought he should tell some uh, Jewish stories or something. So I called the chief rabbi of, of uh, Moscow, Rabbi Lazar, and I told him, Beryl Lazar. And he said, Beryl, tell me, is that true? And he said, yes, this is a true story. And I know the family and we have contact with them. And I remember thinking to myself, this is really weird. Why did I hear this story? Um, I'll tell you a story about Reb Chaim Volezhener. It's connected to Miami because it's about him. He was the Rosh Hashiva of the Branovich Yeshiva. Branovich, how do you say it? Branovich in Europe. And he came here to Miami. He traveled. There's no planes yet. He took a ship and he's traveled for a few weeks to come here to collect money for his yeshiva. His yeshiva was in a bad condition and he needed money. So he traveled and he came here. And he, uh, as he came in Miami, he found a friend of him that was learning with him in the Cheder and the Shtetl and the Baranovich. And he was very happy to find a friend. The friend was, um, had a big uh, coat factory and they kissed one each other. And the friend asked, tell me, Rabbi, why did you come to Miami? So uh, Rabbi Yochaim said, listen, my coat, two buttons fell off of them, of the coat, and I'm searching uh, uh, after someone to sell them back. So that sounded very real to him, but he said, it's a rabbi, I can't ask any more questions. And then Rabbi Chaim was there for a few weeks, even may maybe for a few months, but he didn't succeed, he didn't get money. He was traveling back and forth and didn't get uh, too much money. Uh, the last night before he had to travel back, he went again to say shalom to her, to say bye-bye to his friend. And then his friend again asked, tell me rabbi, why, why did you come from so far so many kilometers you were traveling, so many weeks you left your, your home, uh, that of you. Why, why did you come here? So Chaim said again, listen, two uh, buttons fell off my coat and I, I needed someone to solve them back. So his friend said, that can't be better. No one travels so far for sewing two, two buttons to his coat. No, doesn't make sense, right? Uh, so the rabbi said, you're right. That's not why I traveled. But I want to tell you, I didn't travel here for selling two uh, buttons, but you also didn't travel from the heights of uh, the Southern Rakim down to, to this uh, world for just having a coat factory. And then he started telling him about the yeshiva, about the Torah, about supporting Torah. And you could be uh, shortly went out of his house with a fat uh, check and a lot of money. And he came back home with uh, what he wanted. Um, so I, I think about this story uh, a lot of times when I uh, find myself in, uh, some, uh, uh, in some of those situations and I say, I also don't think I came to be uh, to sit across of Putin or across of the King of Spain or, or Obama just for chatting with them and hearing stories. I think something, um, I remember once I met uh, the Queen of, uh, of Spain we were there also on the state uh, dinner, and she's a very nice uh, lady. She's she was a, an uh, anchor in her state until she uh, got married to the king, and she was a journalist and very known, uh, um, very nice, uh, pretty uh, lady. And we were having after the dinner was uh, was over, we were having like a drink all together. People were going around and drinking crazy selfie, 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 and she was. I saw she was getting tired, but she was still nice to everyone. And then I was standing next to her and speaking to my friend and I saw like she's getting exhausted. So I said to myself, I was mumbling to myself and I was saying, oh, it's not easy to be a queen. And she heard me and she said, it's easier than being a journalist. And that brought us <laughs> to speak. I don't know, my friend, I think told her, no, Rivka has 11 children at that time. Um, I was still 11, I didn't have a baby then. And she said, wow, 11 children. Tell me about that. I have two daughters and I don't get along with them. And I, it's so hard for me. And she didn't believe me. She had a lot of questions. She told me that she was once 
in Yerushalayim, for a visit in Jerusalem, and they took them, she was uh, coming to a kibbutz, to volunteer, something like that, and they took them to a tour in, in Jerusalem, uh, and she saw a family with seven children, and she thought they're joking, and can't call me. So I met, she was uh, crazy about meeting me with 11 children, had a lot of questions until the king had to come and pull her in his hands because the ceremony had to go on. So I was also then telling myself, me from Beitar Elite, I, I, I my plain uh, red car rabbits, uh, coming from a very plain family. You could ask my cousin Avidan. My mother doesn't put makeup on her. And I also never saw a cosmetician from inside. So I'm speaking to such a known, uh, um, and it was really a question. It happened also once with, with Sam. That was really funny. It was that someone told me I'm a Wonder Woman. Could you guess who was that? Wonder Woman herself. <laughs> we, we were traveling to LA with the president. And then on the plane, I got an, an email message in, in my inbox. And it was saying from the consulate and was saying that uh, Gal Gadot has a, tomorrow she has a premiere of uh, Justice League, something like that. And she's inviting the president to come uh, to, to her premiere. So I was asking my colleague who was sitting next to me, who's Gal Gadot? So he says, you're joking. I said, no, who's Gal Gadot? Because I never, uh, I was never in a uh, uh, movie or something like that. So um, he said, Gal Gadot, if she is inviting us, we must go there because I need a selfie with her. <laughs> and each and every one of my staff said the same. You must be there. I need a selfie. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we took the president. Uh, I remember myself going down the, the plane with my uh, uh, plane, that black shirt, and going uh, straight to the main of, uh, street of Hollywood. I don't remember the name of the building, but it was crazy. Like, it was three, uh, uh, like the height of three uh, floors, all those um, uh, crazy. I didn't see uh, anything like that in my life, uh, my first time. And we were arranging all the security issues, preparing for the president, and then we brought the president there. And my staff was crazy. They all got selfies with her, and she was uh, And then we came back to the office in the hotel, and uh, we were working, and I heard them uh, back of me showing each other their selfie. This is me, this is her, this is better, this is less. And then they said, Rivka, where's your selfie with Gal Gadot? So I said, I didn't take a selfie with her. I was busy. Someone had to work for you, all of you to get <laughs> selfies with Gal Gadot. So, uh, so I said, no way. Sam, that was the council, said, no way. You you, if you're here and you were there, you have to have a picture. So I said, even if I would like to, I can't, because I sent all of the, the cars back home. I went to drive. I told the drivers we are done for the day. We could go back home. So I have no no car, no driver. So Sam said, "Take my car." So that's how I found myself in the middle of uh, Hollywood, in the streets of, uh, and they were closing like around the the even at three of the streets because all the fans were jumping on the on the um, uh, fences to see her. So um, he gave me his car. And I was still wearing my clothing, uh, my uh, simple clothing from the, I'll show you the pictures soon. And the police was opening all the guards because they thought it's an, it's an important car. It was the car of the, of the ambassador. And I just got into the uh, area and her husband, uh, Yaron Balsana was there and he was uh, telling her to come. And I got a picture and she was saying, ah, I heard you are the real Wonder Woman. So <laughs> since then, when I came to LA, I already knew who's Gal Gadot and I didn't make any more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so really I was always thinking what, why is the reason that I'm, I'm there in that place? Um, and I think the real reason is, I'll share with you another, another story. <laughs> That's the last one. Um, we once uh, visited the Vatican. We had to visit the, the Pope and the foreign affairs ministry, they uh, paid a, a big uh, important to this uh, meeting. They thought, and that's true. Because the Vatican and the Pope has uh, very important relationships with the Palestinians and with Arab um, 
countries. So they wanted the president to be prepared very good for the meeting. And we had scenarios in, in Israel already. They started preparing us. And as we came to Rome, at our hotel came into the hotel, the ambassador to Rome. And as you know, there's a separate ambassador to the Vatican. It's this separate uh, country in Rome. And we were having a lot of uh, preparations, meetings, uh, really uh, important meetings. And afterwards, they also gave us the technicalities, like how would it look? They were telling us that each one of us will be um, company, accompanied by a high rank uh, cardinal, and they will uh, take us the long halls. We will, were supposed to be walking them. At the end, we would be lift by ourselves, and the door will open, the Pope would be there. Each one should shake his hand and bow, and he will give us a small souvenir. And then we'll go to the other room for the uh, real important um, uh, bilateral uh, meeting. So at this point, I stopped the ambassador and I told him, listen, uh, I don't uh, shake hands with men. That's our minhag, um, according to, to religious uh, issues. It's a minhag, it's not, but I don't shake hands with men. So please tell the head cardinal of the Pope. And he said, no problem, no problem. Yossi was his name. He was their ambassador then. No problem. Okay, Let, uh, come, the next one came and we were going down the steps to the cars. And I asked him, Yossi, I just double checked. You remembered. Yeah, you told the, uh, the Vatican that I don't shake hands. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. It was such a hectic day. I was so busy. It's such an important meeting. Call your rabbi. I'm sure he will give you an heter <laughs> time because it's so important and you can't ruin this uh, protocol and uh, ruin our important meeting. So that's, I didn't want to do that. So I didn't call my rabbi. And we started going all those long calls. And as we're getting closer, my stomach was a bit anxious and I was uh, nervous. And I was saying, oh, it shouldn't be me to learn uh, this important meeting. Um, and I was like saying, what's, what's going on? What should I do? What should I do? And then I remember, I remembered is a skula remedy. Um, I, I'm a Litvak, so we usually, Litvaks, we don't use skulas. Okay? We even laugh about, about skulas. Uh, my, um, my brother-in-law, he's a, he's a rabbi in Israel, and he has a joke about skulas, you know, Perek uh, Kufyutet and Tehillim, chapter Kufyutet is very long. So he says, you, you are looking for a skula, take Perek uh, Kufyutet, say it Kofitek times, that's 119, right? And for, for Kofitek days, and then he gets quiet from all those uh, Hasidish that want schools. But there's a school from a prime Belajana that even let like believe in that school. And that's a school to say, ain't old new value. When I, when I came in, I said, wow, this is my, <laughs> my uh, so that's a big school and it works. Really, I tried it a few times. So that's what I did. I said, and then butter and then butter. And my turn came. The president was first. I was after him. And as the Pope did this to shake hands, I said, listen, I'm from the ultra Orthodox community in Israel. I uh, don't shake hands with him. He, he was very interested and he was asking questions. And he was amazed to hear I have 11 children. And everything was okay. Nothing was. And it helped and worked very good. And since then, I even used it a few more uh, times. And I remember like thinking, uh, such an important uh, leader of the world. And what was interesting him, my family, my children, things like that, as Putin, that's his crazy uh, leader. Yes, don't tell him I said, because I'll be sent to Siberia. And you know, when we came there, they were telling us you can't take pictures of him, of Putin. And as I saw him, I understood he's very short. He's really very short. So you can't take pictures uh, of him. Only after he stands behind the podium and they put a small um, uh, step, when he goes on the step, you can take a picture. Uh, so, but I, I, I did, I did, I take a, I took a picture with him. So you'll see soon. I'll show you the picture. Um, uh, the person who took the picture almost was sent uh, to jail for that. But, but I had a picture, and also him, such a um, crazy leader, was interested in telling me a story about family and telling me a story about children and things like that. Um, at the last summer, now 
July, President Biden uh, was inviting us to uh, for the last, it was our last state, state visit. President Rivlin finished his term on July, a few days before uh, we were invited here to the White House. Um, so also a lot of protocol issues, the car goes in here and stops there and someone comes out and gets us. I remember, I remember that from being by Obama five years before, everything stayed the same. Even the room, there's a salon called the Roosevelt Salon. We were waiting at the same place. I think the presidents are never busy, but they let us wait for five minutes. <laughs> it makes, <laughs> yeah, it makes it more important. And uh, when you wait, there's the same cookies five years ago and now the same, <laughs> not the same, the same kind of cookies. And, yeah, chocolate chips, big chocolate chips cookies and um, candies, M&M's candies with the sign of the president. Everything is the same, even the curtains are the same. I hope they watched them uh, from uh, 2015. So we were waiting there. And then the protocol uh, uh, lady um, said that by first, President President will go in by himself, but that's a temity for uh, four eyes, as we call it in Hebrew. And then the uh, delegation of uh, uh, will come in for the uh, for the international meeting. We had a lot of issues to speak with him uh, about Iran and about money for the IDF, and we were, we had um, a list of uh, of things. But then he said, President President, he told me it's our last time here. Maybe you come with me when I go in for the Teta Teni thing. So I said, yes, I'll go. And we went in, we were just the three of us in the room, uh, one more lady, and he asked, who's that lady? So President Helen said, she's my chief of staff. Her name is Rivka and guess how many children she has, but he didn't let him guess. He answered by himself and said she has 12 children. And President was like, 12 children? I can't believe it. My mother should see this. My mother loved big families. She's, she was maybe a Catholic or something. She was some sort of a, a Christian and she loved big families. And I wanna tell you a story about my, about my mother, but first I have to go to a mother of 10 children. And he went on his knees down and in an elegant way, just came back up. I was uh, sure something will be uh, torn up, uh, button or something. He had, had a new uh, suit, a blue new uh, million dollar suit. Everything was okay. And then he took me to the other side of the room. It's, a, it's an oval room, yeah. And on the shelf, the biggest leader of the world, what he's holding on the shelf in his uh, working room, a picture of his mother and telling me a story about his mother. Um, we saw in the picture, uh, I'll show you this in the picture, it's very funny because he's laughing, so we had to laugh too. Uh, it's his mother standing in, the, in a red nice dress and Obama on one side and him Biden on the other side. And he was telling us the story. This picture was taken on the day of swearing Obama to a president and him to a vice president. And then on one uh, step of the ceremony, Obama freezed, like he was so anxious and he just like did this. So his mother said, come on boy, I'll take you, give me a hand and, and he got out of it. And it was, he was laughing. It was, he thought it's very funny, like he was laughing so much that we had to laugh also and I'll show you the picture. Uh, so, so I remember also thinking to myself, big leader of the world, a liberal leader in 2021 when it's not so, is your boom for a second? Please speak it out. Family, children. No, I'm Mark. watching the Zoom. I have to tell you. Today, you're the no, you're not getting sort of like my HBO Max account. And I'm not letting people use my wow. HBO Max right. account. You gotta up. stop. I'm not letting people use my HBO Max yeah. account. Why? Because and it's my. No, I, I never said she could. I never asked. A big family. So I never. I'm not gonna let her use it again. Because my name is Rifkan. Not because I'm chief of staff of someone. Because he. I don't want Why? just Why? because I uh, decided to dedicate my life to family and to children and that really made me uh, think a lot about um, about those uh, those issues uh, that gave me some sort of answer to, to why why am I in uh, in this uh, place uh, as I told you a lot of time 
people ask me, how, how do you do that? How do, so it's not easy. I read once a book called, How Does She Do It? Uh, did someone read that book? It's a funny book about a, a mother to two children and she's a banker, she works for a bank and she's uh, busy juggling between her career and her family. And it's really funny, like she has some, uh, funny, funny stories. But I, when when I read that book, so I uh, tell, tell to myself, if she would see me, I think she would laugh. Mm-hmm. And if she would see how many uh, dentist appointments I make a year, how many PTAs I uh, survive, how many prayer registration of uh, kindergarten and things like that, um, even if she would see how many shoes I have. <laughs> I think I think we have like 600 pairs of uh, shoes, never in the right place, never in the drawer. <laughs> Always and once once we had big big event of uh, 65 leaders from the world came to Jerusalem. It was uh, about anti-Semitism. It was just before the pandemic, two years, two and a half years years ago. Leaders, kings, the king, uh, Belgium, the king of Spain, Putin was there, Pence was there. Like all the leaders of the world were coming to Jerusalem and we had a conference about anti-Semitism. And I remember my children, uh, we live in Telstone and that's on the street. So my son uh, that learns in the Cheder and the Cheder has the window to, he told me, Ima, I'm taking a phone with me. And anytime a leader goes on the street, you tell me, I wanna see the uh, kind of car he brings. And I, and I told him, so I think that his Rebbe was really um, upset at me that day. but came the morning of the, of the event uh, and we were really very busy. We had to have um, the presidents for meetings and then the evening, the main event. I remember I had to have the president of Greek at eight and at 8.30, the president of uh, um, Macedonia or something like that. So I was preparing myself very early and I wanted to go out of the, um, uh, the house at 6.30 because the street was really very, uh, um, uh, a lot of traffic. So um, I prepared the uh, clothes for the children and the food and uh, uh, everything. And then um, Esty, she's eight years old, couldn't find her shoe. She was missing a shoe, 600 pairs of shoes and she was missing the shoe. So I said, Esti, please wear your Shabbos shoes. I'm in a rush. I have to go. I'll be late for the president of Greek. And for no way. She was not willing to wear her Shabbos shoes, only her shoe. And I was like, where's her shoe? Where's her shoe? Under the, 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 the couch and under the beds and, and no shoe. And then I remembered that the evening before, her sister, her big sister, Malki, she's 16. Her, it's her duty to, to sweep the, to sweep the um, living room at the end of the day, and she doesn't like her job. So she's always very nervous. And I remembered her yelling, if I'll find something of your on the floor, it will go to the garbage. Oh. And the garbage in my house is this height, yeah? <laughs> so I just took the garbage <laughs> and flipped it over. And at the end of the hill of the garbage, there was a shoe. Oh. So, and, so as she had a shoe and she could go and I could just run. Uh, I, I got to, to the office by, by time, on time, but then it didn't finish my, uh, my tragedies for that day because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they sent the, the um, president of Macedonia at the, ta- at the time of the president of Greek. We had the flags of, uh, yeah, everything was uh, upside down and it was terrible. I, I by a miracle, I caught it in the in the last minute before he was going on the red carpet. So we just took all the flags down. So he didn't know uh, that mistake and we changed the talking points. That's the most important thing. The president took with uh, the Macedonia president about Greek uh, issues because they're not such good friends. Um, so I thought uh, always when uh, reading that book that if she would know uh, how uh, how do I do that, she she would laugh. Um, but really, as I said, the question is not how. Um, I believe the question is why. Why um, did Hashem put me in that place? And I think um, that I learned in those uh, years that Einod Nuvado was a big uh, lesson for me, uh, a big uh, thing I learned. And... For a second lesson, also the importance of having a close family and dedicating 
uh, for the family. Sometimes I come home very late and instead of sitting to eat with the children, I'm in my phone and I'm in my computer. And I, since then I try to release, to take an hour or two to put the phone at the side and to be with the children. Uh, they deserve it. And my husband also has not easy job. Uh, so really sometimes I have to say, just tell myself, listen, now it's the time for the children. Now it's the time for the family. It won't come back these years. Um, so th those lessons, uh, are lessons I learned, and very happy to share with you. And thank you for listening to me. And if someone has questions, I love time for us to speak up. With, with, yeah, please. Oh, good question. <laughs> um, so I was married at age of 18 and I got a job of a teacher that's a regular job for all regular uh, Haredi um, girls and I was on my way to be a teacher I was very uh, happy and very um, and then and then my father-in-law he um, became the head of uh, the finance committee in the Knesset and his parliamentarian assistant left him went to learn in the university. And he was searching after uh, an assistant and he called me and he said, Rivka, would you like to come with me to work in the Knesset? And I, I was uh, maybe 19 and a half. I was uh, pregnant with my uh, first uh, daughter. And I said, no, I'm a teacher. No way I'm leaving this uh, job. I'm so happy of it. I'm so proud of myself. But uh, I, I did, I, I went with him. Uh, the salary of teachers what, those days is what's 90, 96 or 97 was 700 shekels per month. And then the Knesset uh, was a better salary like thousands of triple and double or more. Um, so I went with him and I got to know uh, the Likud party and then I, moved over to there and I had some campaigns. I made the, the campaigns. Uh, so that's how I uh, got the job. Yeah, it was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. There was a translator at the official meeting, but then at the dinner, he spoke English. English. Yeah. Don't, don't tell anyone because <laughs> yeah, that's why he wants human. Could be. <laughs> he doesn't. If they don't speak English uh, at uh, official uh, places, but he knows English. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know it's funny. How did your husband become the mayor of So my husband, um, not like me, I. Was, I was grown, uh, up in a very um, some, uh, plain family, but my husband did uh, come from a politician uh, family. His father was a member of Knesset and he was head of uh, Yeshiva or Sameach, you heard about it. And he was like very involved and he did a lot of things. So he, he like, he knew the, the material, he, he liked it. He, but when I got the job, he was very proud of me and he loved it. Um, so then he be became the deputy mayor, and a few years after he became the mayor, he became the mayor. How many people um, I think seven thousand. It's a small town. Yeah, seven thousand, maybe eight thousand. Is it part of Yerushalayim? It's not uh, officially. It's not part of Yerushalayim, but it's very close. It's like two minutes from Halnof, and uh, like very close. <laughs> maybe 10 minutes yeah it's really close like one day i believe it maybe will be a part of your shop <laughs> so uh i'm former military so yeah uh, so i know there's a uh, um, russian uh, big uh, naval game in terrain close to israel are you still in politics and what's your opinion is this uh uh, operation that we conduct in Ukraine, you think it's just gonna that relationship between Russia and Israel. And also, I understand there is a short deal, so the relationship, very bad relationship with Russia, right now. Yeah. They're losing uh, military people to each other. So I'll tell you what, 
um, first of all, I'm not a job, I'm not in, in a job for half, half a year, but I know we, as Israel, we are very careful not to take side because Ukraine are friends, but we need Russia, especially against Iran and, and Turkish. And also there's a big issues of, um, of money, like oil. So I believe that the prime minister of Israel, he won't take a side. But now I heard that he's um, like Putin was asking him and also Zelensky was asking him to maybe to try to uh, get um, the two sides to speak. So that could be, but he will be very careful. And the big uh, story is uh, between Israel and the States because Israel uh, is a good friend, like the States is good friends with us, but they want us to, speak against Putin now. So that's that's the that's also a crazy situation. But I heard that Israel is gonna condemn Russia at the United Nations. So they plan to do that. Is it wise? But now but now no things are changing. I'm, I'm not there for half a year so I'm not like in the and even if I would so I usually you know can't everything can't say everything but um, we are all signed and um, we all polygraphed once, uh, once in a month and things like that. Are you still in politics? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, Baruch <laughs> Hashem. Um, I'm working for a cyber company, an Israeli cyber <laughs> That's the, <laughs> yeah, that's the place. Um, I, took, I took some vacation with my children. I, I was with them two months. That was too much for, the, for me, being home two months. I got, I got crazy and I went down. Thank you so much for, Thank you for listening. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah. Oh, sure. And Menasha and Jamie, thank you so much for sponsoring and allowing us to meet this uh, famous, famous presentation. It was supposed to be here.